Hey guys, welcome back. So now we are jumping back into Heroes Reborn, to where throughout this series, each issue heavily focuses on a member of the Squadron Supreme of America, to where in this case, we have made our way to Nighthawk, who for some time now I've thought of as like the Batman of the Squadron Supreme, and really for the most part he is. But then on top of that, this guy has so many other backstories blended into his, that it is just nuts. So let's get into it. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week, and don't forget to hit that bell up top so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. All right, so before we jump in, I just wanna do a quick reminder, just for a few seconds, and for anyone who's starting with this video, and just let you know that anything you see with Heroes Reborn 2021, this reality has been manipulated by Mephisto which is something that Jason Aaron had started in Avengers prior to this iteration of Heroes Reborn. And I go more into depth about that in like the first two videos of this playlist. And I got that link down below. But I just wanted to put that out there because there's certain comments saying that I'm, I'm putting up clickbait with mentioning Mephisto in Heroes Reborn, whether before or after the reveal. So I just wanted to come back, say that that's what's going on. And if you don't believe me, you ain't gotta take my word for it. Just go back to my first Heroes Reborn video and take my word for it. <laughs> but where we start off with this one, it begins at the Ravencroft Asylum, which already has Arkham vibes from the get-go. But when we jump in, we start off with Craven the Hunter, who's running through Ravencroft Asylum, taking out security, taking out police officers, the Ravencroft staff, like anything that's moving, while wearing like a previous version of Nighthawk's suit. And he's doing this very much as a taunt to lure Nighthawk out, while claiming that wearing the suit and tearing his way through all these people is a way of proving that he's a better version of Nighthawk than the actual Nighthawk. And it's likely him trying to one-up the vigilante by going past the fear factor and straight to murder. But also while we see this, we get a bit of commentary from from Nighthawk, who gives us a bit of a brief run through of his backstory. And it's here we find out that his parents, they never wanted him. And it's something that he came to the conclusion of with them constantly pushing him off to different butlers or sending him off to boarding school just to get rid of him. And eventually when his parents were killed, he had later become Nighthawk to where then he believed that the work he was doing at night, that it would somehow make his parents proud and prove that he was a worthy son who his parents would look to from beyond the grave and see him doing the deeds that would have earned them noticing him. But with him dealing with that constant voice in his life with what should have been parental love and with Nighthawk knowing that the world ain't just gonna hand you that love and fill the void. So then he just settled with fear. And Nighthawk admits that there's plenty of people throughout the halls of this asylum who had really came to that same conclusion. And in a number of their cases, they had some messed up childhood, which may have been worse than his, but even still, he doesn't see himself too different from them. Either way, they're broken, and either way, they're trying to fill that void. But with Craven tearing through this asylum, Commissioner Luke Cage, who definitely gave himself away with the sweet Christmas comment, but him and his men are then overtaken by clouds of smoke, to where initially Commissioner Cage didn't know what was going on, until he found Craven disarmed and tied up, which let him know that the real Nighthawk was there, which then caused him to pull back his men and create a perimeter around Raven crop asylum so that nighthawk could go in and handle the rest because there's still a few more dozen super psychopaths who are still on the loose within ravencroft asylum so the commissioner got out of his way and what was left of the security they saw the smoke and they heard things get quiet and they just left a path for nighthawk to make his way through so that he could get to the others inside and with nighthawk heading into ravencroft asylum like as he makes his way in you also hear this laugh which right away tells you like okay here comes his version of the joker along with the similar staging of a Batman Arkham setup. But also as he makes his way in and he sees the handiwork of Craven and some of the other criminals who have escaped from their cells. But then it's here where we get a look at the process of him actually getting the call and then making his way here. Because during the day, this version of Kyle Richmond, who sits as one of the weakest members in the house to where in that seat, he has no real voting power in Congress. But when we find him earlier addressing the need for mental health care, it was at this time where he got the alert during the day to where he rushed out from that hearing, called in a life model decoy, and it was from there he went down the bat pole. I mean, the night pole. Wait, that don't sound right. Or I guess it was the hawk pole? Well, he went down a pole into the night cave, which is located under the Capitol building. But with seeing this and whatever you want to call the pole, like it very much reminded me of the bat pole or the bat poles, which were just behind the bookshelf in the old Adam West show. Like it legit hit a little bit of nostalgia for me. Like I like that. But it's here for Kyle Richmond underneath the Capitol building where he has his version of the bat cave, which is the night cave. And throughout here, much like Batman, he has his relics, like the Winter Soldier's arm, Silver Samurai's mask, Electra's size, Hate Monger's mask, and man, we haven't talked Hate Monger since Marauders. But he also has the mask of Baron Zemo, and it legit has like Bruce Wayne interior decorating like all over the place. But from here, we see him take his version of the Batmobile, which in his case 
is called the hawk rod <laughs> And man, like Jason Aaron, I gotta take my hat off to you for that one. Like that was a mad clever name choice right there. But also with him making his way to Ravencroft Asylum, like it's also here we find out that he has very much like the same abilities as your 616 Nighthawk who had taken the formula, which would give him super strength or moderate super strength throughout the day. But then when night came around, he would then get like a modest buff in strength, which wasn't off the charts like super crazy, but it would take him from like your regular Captain America strength to like an entry level Spider-Man. <laughs> I'm not sure if that helps. But in the nighttime, he would also have enhanced senses. And from what we're seeing from this Nighthawk, his abilities are very similar, but also with it feeling like it has a hint of Moon Knight sprinkled on it in a couple ways. But with this jumping back to this version of Nighthawk and then making his way further into Ravencroft Asylum, the laughter he had heard earlier is getting louder. And as he goes deeper in, like it's here where we run into his rogues gallery, which is the lizard who kind of feels like his version of Killer Croc. But then you also have Bullseye, who we had known to be here in Ravencroft Asylum after seeing him in another incident within Heroes Reborn number three. But then also you have Moon Knight, Sabretooth, Doc Ock, and even Deadpool, who in the case of Deadpool, I feel like Deadpool was a bit underutilized in this. And in Deadpool's case, like it's really just like a cameo, much like we had seen with Thanos when he fought Dr. Spectrum. And when I see minimal moments like in a story like this, I, like I get it because there's already so much going on and like we haven't even scratched the surface of this one. But with there already being so much going on, if it digresses too much, then the reader just doesn't know what to cling onto. And trust me, there's plenty going on here. Because also where we have Nighthawk who's fighting his way through to where he's then approached by the Black Skull who like we'd seen before is your Red Skull with the Venom symbiote. But then it's here where we find out that during the first Secret Wars in this reality and let me stop you right now like before any of you guys try to think about this too deeply and try to make logic like well if this is an alternate reality and he went to Battle World why wasn't he in the first Secret Wars? And I'm gonna just say right now like we don't know if Mephisto planted these memories as he crafted this reality or if time did pass in all of these events happened over a number of years and their secret wars took place within a sandbox like we don't know and i'm sure it'll be cleared up later but for the time being i'm just gonna roll with it but in the case of nighthawk during the first secret wars he had brought the symbiote back to this earth to where he then found out the suit was alive much like peter parker to where then he had got rid of it and so now when we see the symbiote with black skull it's trying to go back to nighthawk much like we had seen the venom symbiote try to go back to peter parker but between the symbiote grabbing hold of him and also otto octavius jumping in who by the way in this world had his additional arms taken so he literally uses an octopus or matter of fact a number of them but nighthawk is able to get out of both with using devices from his utility belt while also last but not least stopping deadpool before he went upside his head with a sledgehammer but it's after this where nighthawk makes his way to the source of that laugh and it's the green goblin mr g who is of course his version of the joker and when nighthawk gets here the green goblin is holding gwen stacy over the ledge but also in this world, Gwen Stacy is Nighthawk's most recent sidekick by the name of Night Gwen, even though Nighthawk would prefer her to be called Nightbird so that she doesn't have a hero name with her actual name in it, but she preferred to be called Night Gwen and that's just what it is. But then also here's the thing, cause with the Green Goblin holding Gwen Stacy over the ledge, he lets her go and like right away, I'm thinking Spider-Man, death of Gwen Stacy part a million right here. But as it turns out, this had taken Nighthawk to a flashback of the death of his first partner, Falcon who had actually died in this world the same way that Gwen Stacy had died in the 616 and not like the exact same way because it's not like he caught Falcon and his neck broke but rather Nighthawk just didn't get there in time and his first sidekick Falcon died as a result so with that being the case like don't be surprised if we get a story later on called under the red wing or something and I mean, probably not, but if it happens, you heard it here first. But with the goblin dropping Gwen, Nightwing, he does catch her in time, but only to find out that she's already been infected. And when she attacks him, he throws Hawkerangs her way, which catch her in the arm, and then she throws the Hawkerangs at the goblin, which catch him right in the face. And it's here where we get to the very Joker-esque motive of the Green Goblin, because he wanted Nighthawk to either kill him or be involved with his death in order to break him. And with Nighthawk rushing over to him, he knocks out Scarecrow, and I don't care what nobody said, that's Scarecrow. <laughs> but when Nighthawk makes his way to the Goblin, saying like he's not gonna let him die, the Goblin then pushes the Hawkerangs deeper into his own face. Talk about how about now? But for the Goblin, like as the life is slipping from his body, he tells Nighthawk like, hey, you can kill me, like nobody will know. But Nighthawk still refuses and he calls for Commissioner Cage to bring in the paramedics. But then also in the Goblin's last words, like his last request, his dying wish, like he tells Nighthawk that he heard from the Silver Witch that this reality isn't what it's supposed to be and he tells Nighthawk just before he blacks out don't let them change the world back because he really likes it this way 
but with this happening like in my humble opinion if your arch enemy tells you that this reality isn't right but don't change it and even if nighthawk already knew but if your greatest foe says don't change it that likely should be a red flag that lets you know that even if you weren't going to change it that you probably should but in the case of nighthawk much like we saw with hyperion like he thinks over the idea of this reality not being the truth and nighthawk more or less comes to the same conclusion that he doesn't want it to change but for nighthawk his justification process is a bit different because in his case he thinks of how he's doing so much more than anyone else and at the end of the day it's what you do that matters more than anything and this is like his reasoning for not wanting anything in this reality to change but while he's thinking this over to himself within the night cave he then also checks out the footage from ravencroft asylum to where he then finds Blade, who he recognizes from issue 1, but then when he checks to see if all the inmates have been accounted for, he sees that they all have except for one, Maya Lopez, who had escaped before the riots, but like we had seen before, she had just been hanging around Ravencroft, and is here where Nighthawk sees the footage of her leaving with Blade and another figure who initially Nighthawk can identify until he sees the shield, and he's like, wait a minute, is that a Star Spangled Shield? Which then immediately raises his suspicion. But then right after this, we then go into the epilogue where we find Nighthawk fighting against Ronin to where right away we get this narration from Ronin about him coming here to Washington as they battle down the Washington Monument. But for Ronin, he comes here in order to seek the truth, but even with doing so, forsaking his family in a sense. But this is what led Ronin to sneak into the headquarters of the Squadron Supreme in order to get these answers to where then he was confronted by Nighthawk. But after this confrontation, like Nighthawk, he's super puzzled because for one, his hawkerangs, they're made of adamantium and Ronan was able to deflect them with his sword. And this led Nighthawk to ask him, like, what is that sword made of? Who are you? And why are you sneaking into the Squadron Supreme's headquarters? But Ronan doesn't say anything. He just disappears with his purple energy, teleporting away. But he wanted to tell Nighthawk he broke into the Squadron Supreme headquarters because he knows that's where they keep the secrets of the world. But after Ronan teleports away, he admits that the truth is that the only thing that he really knows is that he doesn't know anything but someone over there does but it's here where he teleports to africa and he disables his cloaking technology and it's revealed to us that it was t'challa the black panther but the thing that had led him to sneak away from his family and seek this mission for the truth and it's because a few years back he found an ancient dead celestial buried deep under the ice of the arctic which was calling out to him to help it rise and with t'challa answering to this call and then harnessing some of the power from that celestial plus some of his technology he was then able to create ways to sneak in and out of wakanda in order to pursue the truth but it's not long after he gets back and he changes out of his disguise as ronin and he makes his way to wakanda it's here where he finds that he's being followed and when we see who it is, it's none other than Blade and Steve Rogers. And it's here where he realizes the truth has been looking for him too. And so now real quick, I want to give a special shout out to all the patrons. Thank you guys for all your support. And for anyone who's new here who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below so you can go to patreon.com slash dopespill. But that'll do it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And we'll do it again on the next one. All right, later.